Hi, this is Denise from Portugal Market Farm, and I just want to talk really briefly uh, about a question I get asked a lot, and that is what fiber is good for beginners? As always, my answer to that question is it depends. Uh, when a question comes up, you know, you'll have several answers, and most of the time you'll get a, a lot of different people listing off their favorite fibers or what they uh, actually begun with. And, you know, they have lots of helpful choices to offer. Uh, for me, I like to answer the question in a different way. Uh, one of the answers I do love is when someone says, well, choose the fiber that really moves you or your heart desires and that will keep you spinning. Which, in a lovely philosophical way, is really true. But in a practical way, maybe not. Okay, so... And I say that because you could choose a fiber that is considered to be difficult to spin. It may be one of your favorite fibers or you just want to spin silk. You have a passion for it. But if you don't have the right skills, that fiber can make spinning seem more difficult to learn uh, than it should be. So there's some truth to that. And at the same time, well, it kind of depends. Okay, so here's the answer I usually give. I don't necessarily say what fibers are good for beginners as much as there are types of fibers that are better for beginners than other types of fibers. Some fibers, as I said before, are generally known as fibers that are hard to spin. Um, and that could be because they are shorter fibers it could be because they are smoother fibers and therefore they don't grip as well on your spin. They could be fibers that are harder to draft because they're very grippy or uh, they're very short or whatever it is that makes them harder to draft. Even very long fibers can be harder to draft. Uh, and so there's a couple of different reasons why you might decide that a fiber is going to be harder to spin and may not be the best beginner fibers. For example, uh, cotton is one of those fibers that is not necessarily recommended for beginners because it tends to be short, it doesn't grip very well, and so it can be a harder fiber. A lot of times, well, I don't know if I want to say a lot of times, but I know there's a lot of beginners who really want to spin those really soft fibers. Uh, just go gaga over merino and some of the other softer fibers. And those ones are not necessarily always the best ones to start with as a spinner. Uh, first of all, because they um, they can be shorter. Some of the finer fibers are shorter. Some of them have a lot of crimp. And so they need to be spun in a particular way. Uh, some of them, their preps, especially if you're doing any of these fibers raw, um, they're heavy grease fleeces and they can be a nightmare for a beginner to work with those particular fleeces. So there's a couple of reasons uh, why those ones may not be the best. And then two, if you're a beginner spinner, um, why, I, you know, I, if your budget allows you to do so, then go for it. But I don't really see any reason to practice your spinning on some of the more expensive fibers, you know? I mean, if you're rolling in Angora and that's just your driving passion to only spin Angora uh, rabbit, then, I mean, like I said, whatever it is that stirs your heart. But uh, keep that in mind, you may want to practice. And if the Angora is not working out for you, you may want to start off on the wool. I'm not saying that for everybody because some people don't start off on wool at all. Um, they start off on what they have. But that's just a thought right there. Okay, so after all that, what do I recommend for beginners to spin? Um, I recommend not a breed, but a type of fiber. And I have a preference for the medium fibers, the medium breeds, and for several reasons. First of all, uh, they tend to have a medium staple length. They're not too long. They're not too short. Um, they tend to have a medium cramp. Not so much that you have to spin um, with more twist to hold them together. Uh, 
or to make them stable and not such a loose cramp that or like the long wars where if you spin the long wools uh, with too much um, twist you can get something that feels more like rope so they're right in the middle of the whole adding twist they're right in the middle of the staple length uh, they tend to be lower grease fleeces and i want to say tend to because the primitives uh, like jacob uh, to me jacob is a pretty heavy grease fleece from the jacobs that i've had i consider a heavier grease than like the cheviots or the the dorsets that are the south down wools that are of the um the down family and hill families so they they're going to be a little different if you're doing uh wool as far as jacob concerned but as far as crimp and the staple length and the handle they're all about the same and uh like i said the the jacob will it's heavy and it will felt on you but the down breeds are pretty hard to felt they're pretty hard to get long they're pretty hard to spin so hard they turn into rope of course there's lots of variation in between different fleeces and animals so you can spin some cheviot in the rope if you're not careful but in general as a general statement about the breed they are a bit more forgiving when it comes to adding the twist as far as that's concerned and they are going to be a, a little less expensive fleeces than the long wools or the um the finer breeds so i put all those kind of medium breeds into the list of fibers that have good length a good staple are easy to um, prep from raw basically and i always want to consider that because uh, when i started i prepped all my fibers from raw even as a beginner and so there are some beginners out there that are going to get fleeces instead of roving and so that has to be the ease of prep has to be a consideration because uh, as you're learning fiber prep you may want to get something that you're, you can um, mess around with and it's not an expensive fleece and you don't felt it the first pass trying to learn your technique uh, you can get a list of sheep breeds I highly recommend that you get one of the books with the sheep breeds in them um, I have the field guide to fleece I know I'm not saying that in the right order but it's the, the field guide and so uh, that book gives me a reference to the different uh, types of uh, fleeces within the classifications and also there is a printout for one of the universities and I also use that printout before I got the book to learn about the different characteristics of each of the fleeces. Now I'm, I'm including, or I should say I'm specifically talking about fleece as far as sheep are concerned. And that's basically because um, most of the time as a beginner, you're going to want to learn and practice with wool because the other animals uh, are finer fleeces uh, or they are different fleeces like mohair where the uh, the fleece may felt or it's a different kind of feel and technique for those particular fleeces and so you may want to learn on one of the most forgiving fibers which is wool okay basically that's about it and you know with everything it's somebody's opinion there's no hard and fast rules so take it with a grain of salt just a little you know advice if you're curious and if you're like me you want to hear everybody's different opinions so that you can kind of uh, see what's out there so this is just another opinion as to how i feel about fleece for beginners uh, in the meantime i am carding up a jacob finn blend and as i said before jacob is one of the primitive wools i have uh, breed study videos and fab five uh, videos on both the Jacob and the Finn. Uh, I love the Jacob. It's usually Jacob generally shorter than this right here. Um, and this is the influence of the staple length is from the Finn. 
and the crimp hair is gorgeous. Jacob has pretty good crimp to begin with. And Finn would be more curly. So if you, you see the edges of this particular fleece are curly a lot like Finn. And Finn usually has a, um, a looser curl, looser crimp than the Jacob does. Jacob tends to have a, uh, a tight, springy kind of crimp to it. And so it just, you can see how the fin has loosened Jacob's crimp and given it the little curly edges here at the bottom. And it, some of the fleece, like it seems to me that the dark fleece has an even wider crimp than the light fleece does. That tend, seems to tend to have a tighter crimp. And this right here in particular, it kind of loses a bit of the silky texture that you get from the fin being long wool, but it still has more of a luster to it than Jacob would have all by itself. Because Jacob tends to have that um, dull matte color that the down breeze uh, do, that they all do not quite as much as the down breeze but it, it, it gives off a kind of a, a matte color whenever it's dyed now i'm searching for the word i can't remember what it is but it just uh, it dyes differently and it shimmers differently but there's a little luster to this right here a little shimmer to this um, now in this particular fleece it's greasy and Jacob does tend to be greasy for me. I've done thin and cold washes and it's come out beautiful. Jacob, I generally have to um, scour or I have to wash several times and I have to have some type of warm water. Cold soaps and Jacob really don't work well for me like they do so many other fleeces, basically. At this staple in and this combination, I would still consider this a nice fleece for a beginner with caution because it's just, it's going to spin so well. Thin is, is different among the long wool breeds and it's just going to spin so well. Okay, anyway, uh, I hope some of this made sense to you and you get something out of it if it's just a, a different opinion, like I said. And so I thank you for watching. If you have any questions, uh, you just want to chat, comment about this, uh, please go ahead and put it into the comment section and I'll respond. Thank you so much once again. Have a great day. I stayed in the girlfriend.